Jinkies, what's wrong with your face? So, I recently hate watched that new Scooby Doo distortion. I wasn't planning on doing that, cause why the fuck would I? Certainly not legally, cause why the fuck would I? And I didn't think I could say anything about it that wouldn't already be said by fucking everybody. But after only a couple days or so, the temptation to follow the mob has seemed to overcome me. And I do have a couple thoughts that I figure I could stretch out into content. It's that kind of impulsive, pointless self-indulgence that makes a good YouTube video. Look, you don't need some zero-sub nobody like me to tell you this show is dumb, when so many people far more popular, yet far less intelligent and entertaining, already have. The question must be asked though, does it deserve- Yes. It's interesting that this is the thing that's bringing everyone together to dunk on, when there seems to have been so much shit like this already that I don't think has had this much of an overwhelming unified reaction, as in amateur written modern adaptations only loosely based on the source material with the essence of the current year injected into it. Perhaps it's a sheer density of cringe. Pretty much every aspect of this show fails in some way, but I overall mostly find it just boring. I've seen more spectacularly bad garbage before that's ultimately more enjoyable to watch and talk about if only for the element of chaos. And by the time this video is uploaded, this is bound to be a dead meme already. But let me have my fun, okay? asshole. The first and only funny thing about this show is that it's on HBO Max, a streaming platform that infamously cancelled a bunch of popular shows for no apparent reason, pissing a lot of people off. My question then is, did they do that for the sake of shit like this? Do they want to allocate more resources for this? Is this what they think will push their platform forward? I don't know if that makes any sense as a theory, but it's funny to think about. The only real mystery of this show is why they're unironically presenting this as a prequel to Scooby-Doo. The show clearly doesn't want to be that. Nothing about it has anything to do with the franchise other than the iconography and the fact that there are what can loosely be described as mysteries in it. That's pretty minimal. It's basically its own show. The connection to the Scooby-Doo IP is so superfluous. 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 Is that a real word? Am I going crazy? I don't understand why they would bother with the pretense. Just make your own show with your own characters and do whatever you want with it. But then, of course, probably nobody would watch it. I've heard some speculate that this might have been some other original show at some point, but upon realizing it sucked and nobody would watch it, the exec slapped a recognizable IP onto it to guarantee at least some viewership. I don't know whose asses people are putting that out of, but I wouldn't be surprised. That's how it feels. It's worth mentioning, Scooby-Doo is not exactly a franchise I'm obsessed with, nor would die on a hill to defend the integrity of or anything. Steven Universe and its consequences has been a disaster for animation. The general vibe of a lot of this reminds me of a lot of modern cartoons like Steven Universe or Adventure Time or fucking Rick and Morty. That might not make total sense to say, but I say that mostly just to say that I don't like that kind of vibe. The sorta quirky, meta, art student type humor and general feel. There's even these two shots in the first episode that visually reminded me of Steven Universe and it manages to make the show look even worse than before. Velma and Daphne's character designs are ugly, and I'm not just saying that because I'm racist. Daphne doesn't even look that Asian to me. I honestly keep forgetting she's supposed to be. She just looks weird. The animation quality isn't as bad as I was expecting, and there are some moments where they get relatively interesting with the visuals. There's this one scene though where this one guy in the background is copy and pasted like three or four times. This happens in a lot of things of course, but it's funny how I noticed it immediately. And why are they looking at me? Another thing I noticed is the sheer lack of horror aesthetic in this thing. That's actually a fundamental part of the DNA of this franchise. When they were making the original show back in boomer times, they set out with this simple premise of a teenage band with a cute animal sidekick and put it in a horror inspired spooky looking world and have them solve mysteries and shit. It's elements like that that helped make the original show stand out from the rest of the Hanna-Barbera tripe. So to see something that's technically supposed to be Scooby-Doo not utilize that is a little depressing. A missed opportunity at least. It does it a few times but only a few. A lot of the show is very generic looking. 
could have made the show at least a little more visually interesting. Also, we're still doing episode recaps in the age of binge watching. That format was created for when the only time you could watch episodes was once a week, or if you were lucky enough to catch a rerun. But this show was made for a streaming service in current year. It's not like a really bad thing or anything, but I honestly just wonder why. Okay, so this thing is obviously trying to be a comedy first, over being, you know, a good show. Too bad the comedy is not only not funny, it's mostly just confusing. So much of the humor is just meta-references to supposed tropes. References are probably the lamest form of comedy. Even if the references were good, it's still way overdone. Legit, I have never seen something rely so heavily on that form of joke. But the references themselves don't even make any sense. None of them do. Maybe it's just my ignorance, but I don't think these tropes are even real. Shop owner is always a friendly black man or a spicy and meatball Italian. Even the trailer lines, the ones used to advertise the show, don't make a lick of sense. Sorry I'm not a drunk on the verge of losing custody like every other woman solving murders these days. For all I know, it could be a reference to some niche thing, but if it's a niche thing, then why is it in the trailer? It could just be me, but I've seen a lot of people confused at this. It's not funny to just have meta-commentary. So many lazy shows and movies use it to just substitute humor. It's distracting, it completely breaks the tone of the scene. You can have a meta-joke that still fits within the scene, and makes sense for the characters to say. But this kind of meta-humor, where it basically intentionally breaks the tone as part of the joke, to do it all the time means you're breaking the tone all the time, and the joke needs to be funny to make that worth it. Every other kind of joke simply falls flat. They're pretty much all just difficult to even understand. Why am I selling drugs? Um, easy. You're looking to rebel against your overprotective parents, but don't have the balls to get pregnant. What? Why would it make sense to you for her to get pregnant to rebel against her parents? Since when do people get pregnant to rebel against their parents? My favorite is when 420 is brought up for some reason. You know what 420 is, right? Um, yeah. It's code for adults who still watch cartoons. I don't get it. Is it supposed to not make sense? Is it supposed to not be funny? But it's not commented on, it's just said and then the episode moves on. You can go all day asking questions after each one of these jokes. Not typically the intended reaction to a joke, I'd imagine. There are a couple jokes though that I almost like in a vacuum, like the wine or whatever alcoholic beverage being referred to as idea juice and the Uh, Dorcas McNo friends? Well, Dorcas was actually busy joke and when she says five hundred dollars that's like a million dollars well i found those goofy and also when she says if i were a rich white dude i'd kill everybody just to get away with it not because it's funny but because i can personally relate to it but i'm kidding of course we all know what the real best joke is velma and norville can look after their daughter themselves how hard can watching it be right norville <laughs> norville <laughs> There's this one missed opportunity for a joke I want to quickly comment on. Not Shaggy is streaming, because of course he is, and not Velma comes in and interrupts it. There's an opportunity here to show the chat reacting to the conversation, and make some witty comments or something. But the chat just freezes until Velma leaves, and it shows people simply leaving. How lame. You probably could have put something clever there. Aww. There's also this point in the first episode where Not Shaggy confesses his, um, love to Not Velma. And she doesn't believe him, thinks it's a joke, you know, that whole thing. And it snaps her out of a schizophrenic episode she's having. And it's not funny to begin with, right? And very tropey as well. But then they keep it going, even after that scene. After I had already forgotten it at that point, and so it's just like... Stop. Also, yeah, they made Shaggy a simp. In teen movies, whenever a girl needs money, a guy sells something and then blackmails the girl into dating him for it. Man, in normal Scooby-Doo, chicks simped for Shaggy. But he's a I don't care. I think he's just darling, and I intend to marry up with him. What? Velma, in particular, was all over him in Mystery Incorporated, whereas he didn't give a fuck. Why would you cuck my boy like this? It's so bad, not Shaggy even completely falls behind the main plot, creating his own B-plot of him struggling to help Velma so he can get her to like him. Nothing can stop me from buying Velma's love! I do like how they acknowledge Velma's assholery for a moment, though. If you want in just a little 
little less judgy. I'm judgy. Not that they do a whole lot with it, and it certainly doesn't change anything outside of that episode. But the simple fact that they do point it out is another thing I wasn't expecting that I appreciate. You get a crumb of appreciation from me. Congratulations. Last thing I want to mention is a gag they took from Transformers 2 of all places. Stealing from the best I see. Giving Velma schizophrenia is an interesting creative choice. Not something I would have expected from a Scooby-Doo prequel. Imagining the original show recontextualized with Velma as a schizo is kind of funny. Makes no sense of course, but I giggled to myself when I thought of it. While she was having one of her schizo episodes I alluded to earlier, I neglected to mention how she just happens upon exactly what she's looking for immediately after. Like the thing was under a couch, and she just happened to be at an angle where she could just see it. And then a few moments later, two cops show up and just shoot not Fred's legs. Is this something cops do? Like cops that are supposed to be characterized as good, couldn't have just said stop what you're doing, we're the police? You just immediately cripple the kid? This script has a weird habit of starting on strange plotlines with flimsy basis to begin with, only to drop it like immediately with very little actually having changed. It does this at least twice in the first episode alone. They bring up Velma's stepmom as a suspect for a murder. Yeah, I have no idea why. I have trouble comprehending it. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention to the logic of the plot. Maybe I should pay more attention to the logic of the plot. Yeah. For some reason, they hinge this theory on the mom being in possession of not Shaggy's camera. But then the scene directly after has Velma taking her camera and finding it isn't his. And it's then assumed that she just can't be the murderer. This all happens literally within one minute. The theory to begin with didn't make any sense, but the reason for dropping it doesn't either. Why would this one piece of evidence prove or disprove anything? What was even the point of this from a writing perspective, let alone from from an in-universe character perspective. And then, within the same scene, they drop yet another plot point that was brought up earlier, Velma's backstory reason for solving mysteries. Earlier, they had this flashback sequence of Velma's real mom, and then later on they repeat it, but with what actually happened sort of thing. For some reason, not Velma goes from declaring her mother couldn't have abandoned her, because if mom just left us, it means she didn't love us, which is insane. To having this spontaneous re-flashback and then immediately coming to the conclusion that she actually did abandon her. She left because she hated us. Yes. This time all this happens in less than a minute. Impressive. Really speedrunning through character development here. Nice. I don't even know why it bothers with flashbacks and backstories if it's clearly trying to distance itself from Scooby-Doo as much as possible. It doesn't want to be a Scooby-Doo prequel, but refuses to go all the way with that. It's like trying to do both. Maybe this flashback is a metaphor for rose-tinted glasses and how nostalgia can blind you. And the only reason we criticize this show is because of our nostalgia for the old thing. I can't wait for the video essays about the deep themes and how this show was actually really clever and that it was supposed to be dumb. And thus, anyone criticizing it is just missing the point. And so, it is impossible to do so. In a way, HBO Max's Velma is the perfect show. Okay, so the entire thing with this second episode is that not Fred is accused of doing the murders. The evidence being basically nothing. They even portray it like it'll be difficult to defend him in court. But from what I can tell, the only evidence is, I guess, not Shaggy's camera being in his house. And that Fred looked like he was gonna kill Velma. But Velma had one of the victims stuffed in her locker in particular and another one in a garbage bin outside her fucking house. But they don't suspect her anymore. I cannot with this. I still don't even get why the camera is a piece of evidence at all. Maybe I'm not paying enough attention to the plot. Maybe I need to pay more attention to the plot. Yeah. Also, apparently only one lawyer would agree to defend a rich person. Right. By the way, why was Fred behind that dumpster? The point of having a story like this with this little logic and this much goofiness in it would be to deliver obnoxious comedy, like an absurdist humor. But then the funniness would have to carry the whole thing completely, and unfortunately that's where this show fails the most. And I don't need to tell you the relationship between not Velma and not Daphne is gay. 
Not because it's gay, but because it's disgusting. Because it's gay. And by gay, I mean not well written. Daphne's attitude towards Velma is bipolar, switching between hating and liking her at random. Could you? I literally had to take five jeepers not to strangle you. Whoa. <laughs> what the fuck? Needless to say, I don't get why they would like each other. Since it's taken me so fucking long to make this shit, I could briefly touch on the next two episodes, but god, there is nothing to talk about. Basically nothing happens plot related, it's so fucking pointless. The episodes instead pad out the runtime with stretching out Velma and Daphne's shallow relationship, and preaching about female beauty standards. Yeah, I willingly sat through that. I don't know why, there was no point. There's nothing I feel like saying about it. It's funny though how Velma was apparently super attracted to Fred back when he was a problematic asshole. But as soon as he starts appreciating women on a deeper level, that's when she stops finding him attractive. I have no idea if that was intentional, but I lulled. I don't know what to say about the fifth episode, nothing really happened. <laughs> Gotcha. Oh, yes. All right, this show is finally getting good. Ah, oh, based. I hope she gets locked up for the rest of the show. No, what are you doing? Don't let her escape. The seventh episode is a transparent, ironically, allegory for the coof. Yeah, I remember that. Which is cringe. And the moral of the story is that men are better than women at everything. A bold direction to take, and I can respect that. Half of episode 8 is wasted with this completely unnecessary flashback format, and then they just fall into exactly where they need to be to progress the plot. What is this, Amnesia Rebirth? Nobody's gonna get that joke. Nobody remembers that game. And then the resolution of the episode episode is relegated to the post credit scene. Why are there even post credit scenes in this? I guess they're more like mid credit scenes, I don't know. Speaking of amnesia, they actually bring back Velma's old mom for some reason, and dedicate a whole episode to her simply trying to remember the answer to the show's mystery. What a fun waste of my time. And then in the last episode, Velma gets incarcerated, and that's where the show ends in my headcanon. I think it's the most satisfying conclusion to the series. Oh yeah, and then this happens. No comment. These quick bullet points are all you need to know about these episodes. The overarching plot of the series, which they surprisingly actually attempted to do, is so damn thin it might as well be a ghost. The mystery is unveiled at a big beautiful woman's pace, and there ain't much in the way of logic linking each step, so the audience is not exactly able to follow along. The plot is often pushed by inexplicable spontaneous revelations, if not by complete accident. Basically, not much in the way of story to be seen here, if for some reason that's what you were looking for. Man, thank god Scooby isn't in this show. Save the poor mutt from the train wreck. They'd probably make him a different breed for no reason, too. There's nothing of value here, not even ironically. It's not fresh, it's not a new take on anything. There are so many cartoons for adults that feel exactly like this. I would list examples, but I can't remember them. And when I search adult cartoons on Google, I get something very different. We really shouldn't be giving these people money and views. If you have to watch it for some reason pirate it. But I wouldn't even suggest that. It was fun to make this video at least. Thanks for watching, if anyone is. This video was kind of just a test to see if I can commit to actually finishing something like this. I want to do more. I got several ideas. It's just a matter of if I can keep my ADD and laziness in check. If anyone is watching this, I hope I'll be seeing you again sometime. Can't wait for YouTube to die or something, whatever, I don't care.